online so hi to you if you're out there in the uh, in the world of the internet uh, and it's great to see you this morning it's a wonderful day it's uh, just the day that we remember that Jesus rose again he died on the cross for us and rose again uh, proving his love for us and his conquest over sin and death and so we say together in a moment <laughs> We'll have the words on the screen. I'll tell you, a little bit later, we'll be doing an a Easter egg hunt in the church building, which the kids can get involved in. Uh, and we're going to begin with a new song in just a few moments' time, which we were playing earlier, so hopefully you caught that. And there we are. So everything you need today, if you're... Uh, not familiar with being here, you're very welcome. I hope you feel very much at home with us today. Everything you need is going to be on the screen. And the convention that we have is I say the words that are not in bold and we say together the words that are in bold. Okay? Everyone's staying in today and uh, we will be having a bring and share lunch after the service to just express our love and thank you to John. It's his last service with us today in his official role. So if you haven't come prepared for that, that's fine. Please don't, uh, don't feel that you can't stay. Please do stay, because it would be great just to spend some time with you and help us celebrate and uh, kind of commiserate the fact that John is leaving us today. So, Christ, yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega, all time belongs to him and all ages. To him be glory and power through every age forever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen indeed. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. This is the day when our Lord Jesus Christ was raised gloriously from the dead crushing the power of sin and destroying the sin sting of death. Throughout the world, Christians celebrate the mighty power of God as Christ calls us out of darkness to share in his marvellous light. May we and all Christ's people shine as lights in the world to the glory of God the Father. We're going to light our candle, our Easter candle. Is Chloe around? Would Chloe like to come and help me? We're going to light our candle. It's a humongous candle. Because it reminds us of the humongous light of Jesus. So here's the thing. Right, I'm going to bring this down. Yeah, I know. It's a bit tricky. But here we go. And pull that. Okay, so you go like this. Ooh, and the fire pops out. Okay. Let's have a go. Well done, you've done it. Thank you, Chloe. Marvellous. There we are. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Well, we're going to uh, stand together and sing our first song. See what a morning we were playing it as you came in. So if you don't, if you're not familiar with it, just let the first verse go by and then join in when you feel comfortable. Shall we stand together and sing? <laughs> See what a morning glorious and bright With the dawning of hope in Jerusalem for that the grave clothed tomb filled the 
Jesus, we thank you that in your risen life, you've proved the conquest of death and sin, that nothing can separate us from your love, that nothing can conquer you, that you are the almighty God, the Alpha and Omega, the one in whom there is only light, the one who brings light into the darkness of dark places and dark hearts. Lord, we ask that you would shine this morning as we worship your holy name. Amen. Amen. Well, we continue to worship with the splendor of the King. Sing with me, how great is our 
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. This is an amazing stone, isn't it? It's almost amazing as the real one, but it's slightly lighter. But we roll it away to remind ourselves that what was what was done was the most incredible miracle and the greatest miracle of all time because God conquered everything that would come between us. There's no reason for you and I to be strangers to God. There's no reason to fear God as in being scared of him. But we can come to him as our Heavenly Father through Jesus who died for us. So shall we read these words together? Risen Lord Jesus, as Mary Magdalene met you in the garden on the morning of your resurrection, so may we meet you today and every day. Speak to us as you spoke to her. Reveal yourself as the living Lord. Renew our hope and kindle our joy and send us to share the good news with others. Amen. Well, if you'd like to take a seat, you have to have a little egg hunt. So, I don't know, does anybody like Easter eggs? Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of for the. You probably need to be under eighteen for this, but hey, yeah, I'm not going to check. Uh, so, if you if you are um, if you are under sixteen, uh, we have a little Easter egg hunt. So you might want to just kind of have a little look round. There are twenty three words in that word search. So while the children are looking to find the eggs, and when you find an egg, can you bring it up to me? They're all in this building, okay? You don't need to go outside, you don't need to go through the double doors, and they're not that difficult to find because there's not many easy hiding places here. But when you find an egg, maybe some grown-ups would like to help the children find an egg. There's 23. <laughs> and here's one. Mm. Uh, 
So if you want to see if you can find any of the words on that box that are to do with what Easter has done for us. And then when you find an egg, you bring it up to me. Oh, well done, Hattie. What have we got? Oh, it's a gift. Can you find gift in there? Oh, don't give it away, Mimi. <laughs> Mimi, do you want to go back one slide? Thank you. Oh, what have you got? Oh, you better keep it. Sorry, I was going to keep your gift, wasn't I? What have you got? What's that? What's that? Can you read that? Offering. That's a big word, isn't it? So Jesus offered himself for us. Do you want to take that away and go back with it? There you go. You keep that. Whoops. You went into that. Oh, what have we got? Oh, we've got satisfaction. Can you find satisfaction in there? He satisfied God's requirement for justice because his holy conquest on there so he conquered sin and death he's the life Jesus said he was the life oh Jesus said he was the truth as well alive yeah Jesus is alive and then so are we in him brilliant well done oh justified it's up to mums and dads if they want to let their children eat them now I don't mind it's entirely up to you uh, justified so it's just as if we'd never sinned oh what have you got peace do you want to take it away brilliant yeah hi uh, what have we got here love yeah he showed his love for us by dying on the cross he's the way he is the way to life oh you got two well done what have you got you got grace God's grace yeah so he did it for us we didn't earn it and new life yeah he offers us new life in him and so we're joyful wow what have we got oh. Ooh, he died on the cross, you're right. So we're born again when we receive Jesus into our hearts, don't we? Any more? Got any more? He's got, I tell you what, has anyone not found one? Because that would be very upsetting, wouldn't it? Because I've got, yeah? Hey, Mikey, you haven't found one. Here's one for you then, mate. It's called Promise, yeah? Because Jesus' promise are always true. You can't find one, so I'll see if I can. Ooh, I'm going to have a bit of a look. Oh, you found it. Oh, you well done. Now, if anyone didn't find one, I have got some spares. So, I don't want anyone to be upset. But you've got to be under 18. Don't come to me saying you're upset because you're over 18. You didn't find an egg. Now, let me see. Is that all of them? Uh, I think so. Oh, I can still see one. I can still see one. I'm going to have to get that for me. Maybe that's my egg. Yeah, I'll have that for the sermon. That'd be good. Let me see. Uh, uh, oh, there it is. Right. So you can put the words up, Mimi, now, if you like. So there was 23. I don't know if you found 23 in that box. You want to stick it up? Yeah, there you go. There's loads of words. There you go. For everyone. Hey, what a good one to end on. There you go. Uh, so... <laughs> So those are the words I could think of. There's loads of other ones as well, but I just couldn't afford so many eggs. So there you go. Um, but the, I like the last one at the end because Jesus died for everyone. So all those, all those words, all those wonderful things that we can receive in Jesus. Well, they're for each one of us this morning and they're for each, each person that we see walking by, yeah? Driving in their cars, really not maybe conscious of Easter, uh, conscious of other things but Jesus died thinking of them loving them whether they love him or not uh, which is a wonderful thing isn't it well we're going to have our first reading now can't remember who's doing that is it Sydney doing the first round I don't know somebody knows hopefully oh Elena come on in great brilliant oh it's your mum doing the reading oh go on in chapter 3 verses 19 to 26 now we know that everything in the law applies to those who live under the law and in order to stop all human excuses and bring the whole world under God's judgment for no one is put right in God's sight by doing what the law requires what the law does is to make us know that we have sinned but now God's way of putting people right with himself has been revealed. It has nothing to do with the law, even though the law of Moses and prophets gave their witness to it. 
God puts people's right through their faith in Jesus Christ. God does this to all who believe in Christ because there is no difference at all. Everyone has sinned and is far away from God's saving presence. But by the free gift of God's grace, all are put right with him through, Je through Christ Jesus who sets them free. God offered him so that by his blood, he should become the means by which people's sins are forgiven through their faith in him. God did this in order to demonstrate that he is righteous. In the past, he was patient and overlooked people's sins, but in the present time, he deals with their sins in order to demonstrate his righteousness. In this way, God shows that he himself is righteous and that he puts right everyone who believes in Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Elena. Well, the empty tomb reminds us that Jesus' forgiveness is for each one of us and it's made possible through his death on the cross. So we can have the assurance of his love and the assurance of his promise. So you could just pull me down a little bit, Mimi. I'm feeding back a little. Thank you. So we come to Jesus, the risen Savior, and we can come to him with anything that we feel sorry about, that we feel guilty about today and we can bring them to him and receive his forgiveness. That's the promise that Jesus makes and the proof is the empty tomb. So shall we be quiet for a moment and just uh, bring to him in our hearts anything that we know we need to confess and then we'll join in our prayer of confession together. Christ died to sin once for all, and now he lives to God. Let us renew our resolve to have done with all that is evil and confess our sins in penitence and faith. Like Mary at the empty tomb, we fail to grasp the wonder of your presence. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Like the disciples, behind locked doors. We are afraid to be seen as your followers. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Like Thomas, in the upper room, we are slow to believe. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his only Son to be our Saviour, forgive us all our sins, and make us holy to serve him in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God. So now let us pray that we may walk the risen life of Christ in glory. God of glory, by the raising of your Son, you have broken the chains of death and hell. Fill your church with faith and hope. For a new day has dawned, and the way to life stands open. In our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you would like to stand for our Gospel reading. Gospel reading, Matthew 28, 1 to 20. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. 
After the Sabbath, a Sunday morning was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. Suddenly, there was a violent earthquake. An angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rode the stone away and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid that they trembled and became like dead men. The angel spoke to the women. You must not be afraid, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has been raised, just as he said. Come here, see the place where he was lying. So quickly now, I tell his disciples, he has been raised from death, and now he is going to Galilee ahead of you. There you will see him. Remember what I have told you. So they left the tomb in a hurry, afraid, and yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Peace be with you. They came up to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Do not be afraid, Jesus said to them. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. While the women went on their way, some of the soldiers guarding the tomb went back to the city and told the chief priests everything that has happened. The chief priests met with the elders and made their plan. They gave a large sum of money to the soldiers and said, You are to say that his disciples came during the night and stole his body while you were asleep. And if the governor should hear this, we will convince him that you are, an, you are innocent and you will have nothing to worry about. The guards took the money and did what they were told to do. And so that is the report spread around by the Jews to this very day. The 11 disciples went to the hill in Galilee where Jesus told them to go. When they saw him, they worshiped him, even though some of them doubted. Jesus drew near and said to them, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Go then to all peoples everywhere and make them disciples. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. And I will be with you always to the end of age. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Let us pray. Gracious God, we pray for your mercy and love and your Holy Spirit to surround us as we think about a forgiven church on this Easter Sunday. We ask this in the name of our risen Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. And some of the younger ones might like to come down to the front to see what I'm about to do which is uh, super special and exciting. So um, do come down if you want, otherwise you won't be able to see. Meanwhile, um, yes, that's fine, yeah. Uh, I'm not going to do a flower arrangement, don't worry. <laughs> See, I've been shopping and uh, got a few things. I hope this doesn't fall off. I've got this lovely cooking pot here. Um, and there's the lid. It's empty. So there we go. Nothing in there. All right. So I've been shopping and I've got a few things to make something this morning in this empty cooking pot. Uh, what have I got? Well, first I've got some butter. It's sort of cocoa butter. And I've got some milk solids. Well, it's in a solid thing. I might just put that there for the moment. Uh, I've got an orange. <laughs> put that in there. I've got some sugar. Okay, so Sugar's got to go in there as well. Yes, and uh, I've got some cocoa powder. So
so I'm beginning to wonder what might be in my pot. One or two other things. Whoops. Um, I found this in the back of my fridge, some vanilla essence. Uh, expires January 2017. Uh, don't know what that's doing there. And I've got some aluminium foil. And I've got a spoon to stir it all with. Okay, so that's my... Does anyone imagine what I might be making in this big pot of cocoa and some butter and... Do you, what do you think it might be? Could be a... A mess. Yes, thank you very much for that, uh, Michael. Yeah. Could be a cake, yes. What have you had already this morning? Well, let me have a look and see what it is. I'll just uh, subtly take these things out. And in the pot that was empty... Ooh, there we go, an Easter egg. That's the, the Tommy Cooper School of Magic, if you know who Tommy Cooper was. And uh, there we go, so a lovely orange Easter egg. Now, you've already had an Easter egg, so I'll keep this one. Do you like Easter eggs? Now, why do we have Easter eggs at Easter? What's the reason for that? And the answer is, well, there are lots of reasons, but at least uh, nearly 2,000 years ago, they decided that the early church wanted to have eggs as a symbol of Easter. And one reason we think of today is that uh, the egg reminds us I'm just wondering whether to open it. Um, the egg reminds us, whoops, of, oh, it smells lovely, the, um, the empty tomb of Jesus, like I've got behind me. We took the stone away. It reminds us that Jesus is risen and we have the empty tomb. Other people think about it like an egg, you know, with a chicken in, it's like new life. So there are lots of meanings of why we have eggs at Easter, but the primary reason really is to eat them, isn't it? So, there we go, Easter eggs. Now, um, while we're talking about chocolate, I was doing some reading about how they make chocolate, and uh, this is an Easter egg on the screen, which uh, in, has Ukrainian writing on, and it says with something we've already said, he is risen uh, in Ukrainian. So uh, sometimes people paint actual eggs and decorate them um, uh, or make them out of chocolate, as I said. So it is a reminder of Jesus is risen, the tomb is empty, and that's a wonderful thing we think about at Easter. If I have the next slide, how is chocolate made? Well, if you look at this picture, it's a nice bar of... Cadbury's chocolate, it's not that nice these days, but uh, there's some cocoa pods, and the, um, the dark ones are the most mature, and people pick these, I think particularly in West Africa, and I'm sorry to say sometimes they use child labour and slave labour to make this, uh, harvest the cocoa pods, so as Christians we should have, uh, go for ethical Oh, you've got another one. Thank you. Is that for me? Is that for me? Thank you so much. Um, so, you know, as Christians, we should aim to buy ethical products that aren't based on slavery and child labor. Uh, it, so just remember that too. Now, the next slide, I've forgotten what's on it. Um, Nothing, it's a blank one, that's great. Uh, today we're thinking about uh, the last in our series called uh, the, uh, What on Earth is the Church? And we've had several things. Um, you could take that off, Michael. Otherwise they'll be reading it before time. Oh. How do you do cut? Yeah, thank you. Uh, we're doing, continuing our series called 
uh, what on earth is the church? And our last one, I think it's our last one, John, isn't it? It's called A Forgiven Church. And a few weeks ago, uh, a couple of weeks ago, on Mothering Sunday, uh, Anne Dyro uh, gave a sermon on the theme of a forgiving church, a forgiving church. And she focused on the story of how a servant uh, was forgiven a huge amount of money by his master, who was a king. But then that same servant went and threatened uh, a fellow servant, demanding uh, some money back, just a few, uh, well, denarii or pounds or dollars. And it's a story that tells us we've been forgiven so much by God that we too should be forgiving of others. Uh, but today the theme is a forgiven church, with E-N on the end. And it reminds us that uh, we need to think about what does it mean to be a forgiven church. And as Christians, we believe that as a body of people and as individuals, uh, the church, we are forgiven by God through Jesus. Especially today, Easter Sunday, the work of salvation, redemption has been completed by Jesus and it means we're forgiven. Now I'll say a couple of things. What, it, what doesn't it mean to be a forgiven church? And the first thing is to be uh, smug about being forgiven by God. Uh, it's saying to people, it's, it's not saying to people, I'm all right, Jack, I've been forgiven, aren't I good? Because the forgiveness of God is a free gift available to anyone who wants it. Sometimes um, people think that church people like us are smug and self-satisfied. I'm all right, Jack, or I'm all right with God, Jack. So, you know, sometimes people think we can be like that. Now, I hope that's never true in a church uh, or in a community of Christians. I hope that, and I'm sure that at grassroots level, churches are welcoming and loving uh, to those who come to find out more about God. The, the second thing that being a forgiven church doesn't mean, it doesn't mean we can now behave what we like how we like because we've been forgiven. It doesn't mean to say that we can ignore God's uh, commandments, the law, the scriptures, and do what we like. And St. Paul realized that this does happen sometimes. And he had something to say about it in Romans chapter 6. He said, should we continue to in sin in order that grace may abound? Uh, by no means. So, we don't just do what we like thinking, oh, God's forgiven us, we can do what we like now. And the third thing a forgiven church doesn't mean is that we won't do any wrong from now on. Uh, we do wrong things again and again. And that's why, as we've already had this morning, we have that little time to think in our minds, what have we done wrong this last week? Uh, what sort of things do I need to be forgiven for? And Sometimes God asks us to set things right, to go to someone uh, and to make up with them, to say sorry, uh, and it might be the other way around, we might have to forgive them. And so when we pray on Sunday mornings, uh, John or I or the priest says uh, the absolution, which is to say your sins are forgiven. So there's a few things that we can say. And as it said in that first reading from Romans, chapter 3, we are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that's in Christ Jesus. God's love to us, his forgiveness, Jesus himself is a gift to us. We've done nothing to earn it, that, uh, that wonderful gift. So now to finish with a few positive things about why um, we, what it means to be a forgiven church. And I think firstly it must be the desire to take the good news of the gospel to those uh, around us. And many people do <coughs> share a, a sense of guilt uh, about things they've done in the past, maybe <coughs> uh, something obvious or they've been treating someone badly 
things we feel badly about. And of course, the kind of archetypal idea of someone who's done wrong is a prisoner. Now, um, I spent a week in Brixton prison uh, with a chaplaincy, I hasten to add, uh, not for any misdemeanors. Uh, but it was very moving, really, and very powerful to be with um, men in, in the bit of the prison I was in who, who had done wrong, who had been convicted of crimes. Um, some of them were on remand. They hadn't even been convicted yet. But we, we ran an alpha course in the prison, or not me personally, but uh, it, there was an alpha course going on. And it was wonderful to talk to some of the prisoners who suddenly realized that they could be forgiven for whatever it was they'd done. Uh, in prison, you never ask what people have done. Uh, it's, you know, it's not uh, the dumb thing, as it were. So, but it's not just about those kind of rather obvious things that we do wrong, uh, like uh, uh, criminal offences. It's about our day-to-day -day lives and the things which we need forgiveness for as individuals. The second thing uh, uh, about being a forgiven church is not to become obsessed with how we do church and how we please God that we don't earn God's forgiveness by trying to do everything exactly as we think it should be done. Um, God's uh, love, his free gift, as I said earlier, is a, just that, a free gift to us now and always. We don't have to earn it. We don't have to worry. And the third thing uh, I think that being a forgiven church gives us uh, is a freedom and liberty at its heart. Jesus said to his disciples in John 8, you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. We become free to stop worrying about God and what uh, our relationship with God is and how he does things. Uh, even, dare I say, stop worrying about every little detail of the Christian faith, every little bit of theology and stop arguing about stuff too. I, I do get tired reading the Church Times, which is, comes around every week, you know, the endless arguments through and through. I don't think that's a good example or witness to the world, really. We're free to love and serve others and worship God in spirit and truth. And really, lastly, uh, I said finally a minute ago, just to keep you going, but uh, really, lastly, if I could have that quote on the screen uh, it's one of my favorite quotes really about what is the church what are we supposed to be doing and St. Teresa of Avila wrote this little uh, uh, sentence about Christ has gone he's risen again he's no longer in the world bodily and she said Christ has no body now but yours no hands no feet on earth but yours Yours are the eyes through which he looks with compassion on the world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands <coughs> through which he blesses all the world. Yours are the hands, yours are the feet, yours are the eyes. You are his body. Christ has no body now on earth but yours. And that's a very strong theme in the New Testament, especially towards the end. Uh, we are the body of Christ, and we actually say that every Sunday. We are the body of Christ, so we better get out there and start doing something, doing what Jesus would do. Obviously, uh, you know, we imitate Jesus as much as we can with the help of the Holy Spirit to mend what's broken in the world, to heal and restore relationships, and to live lives of love and compassion. Well, really, to finish with, I just want to show you a couple of slides. Uh, the first one is, this is taken in Greenwich Park, and I hope you notice the superior photography of a double rainbow uh, over the park. And we often associate the rainbow with the story of Noah, but I think after Easter we can think about it, because it does rain a lot in this country, uh, we can think about the rainbow as God's promise to us uh, through Jesus. Um, but if you go to the park, if you've been recently, if I have the next slide, 
uh, you'll see they're planting lots and lots of trees all over the place. And um, uh, certainly uh, but down on the main plane of... Oh, another egg. Thank you very much. It'll keep me going. Uh, I'm being bombarded with eggs up here. Uh, and also on that big slope down from the statue of General Wolf, they're putting more trees there and a lovely gra grass slope. But let's have a closer look at the... If I have the next slide, uh, it's not terribly clear, but you can see that rather weedy tree in the middle, surrounded by three posts with uh, three bands of support on it. And when I saw this a few weeks ago in the park, how they put a new tree in, it made me think about the way in which we relate to God. If we are that tender tree, uh, we are supported by the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit around us, like those uh, three posts. We are actually uh, included in God's love in the Trinity of God. If I have the next slide, this is a Celtic symbol for the Trinity. Uh, as you can see, it's a wonderful little symbol, three in one, that kind of eternal line that never ends, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And Richard Raw, who's an American uh, writer and a monk, he, he talked about how the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, is in a constant kind of relationship of love with each other. If I have the next slide, I believe that as uh, that little blue square is us, we are uh, in all love and truth, we are at the in relationship with the Trinity of God. We are surrounded by God. And it's like what Jesus has done on Easter Day is to bring us into the Trinity of God. As St. Paul said in Galatians, for in Christ Jesus you are all children of God through faith. And to be a child of God means to be part, as just as children, are, like all these lovely children here, we're part of a family so we as believers are part of God's family the children of God through faith and so we don't have to earn this place with God we don't have to earn this place with the Trinity we are given it as a free gift through Jesus and so we are forgiven we are children of God we are a, a forgiven church enveloped or surrounded by God and it's all because of what Jesus did at Easter and how God raised him from the dead for our sakes. Amen. Well, I just apologise to the young ones here. There are no more magic tricks going to happen any time now. Uh, but uh, I do hope that's helped you understand that phrase of forgiven church. And I think I'm handing over to John now to do the uh, creed. I'll just put all my stuff away. So, did you like the trick? No. Yes, jolly good. Thank you, John, revealing uh, another, another skill. Yes. Right. I'll just get rid of all the <laughs> shopping. Okay, okay. Shall we all stand together as we declare our faith in the words of the creed? The creed is just a summary of what Christians believe. So if this is what you believe, then please do join with me. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, and one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, universal and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Well, now we're going to sing once more. Uh, feel free, if it's not comfortable for you to stand, then feel free to, uh, to sit down as well. It's entirely up to you. But shall we sing together the wondrous story? like to be seated as Anne lead us in our prayers. I'm not sure. okay. Praise the Lord. Loving Lord, today we remember the veil of darkness transforming to the brightest light, the most dreadful end becoming the most beautiful beginning. We remember with trembling hearts the depths of despair fading to reveal hope everlasting, the cause of death defeated by eternal life. Today we remember with thankfulness your willingness to be pierced for our sins. We sing with abounding joy of your miraculous rise from death's tomb to resplendent life. Thank you for the promise of heaven and your generous invitation of eternal life for all. Lord, come in love and roll away the stone. Father, we thank you for the gift of forgiveness that you gave unto us 
Lord, we deserved nothing, but you gave us everything. Please provide us with a gracious and loving heart so that we may be able to go into the world and forgive those who need to experience the power of your forgiveness. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lord, please help us to have the strength and the ability to treat our enemies with kindness no matter what they deserve. Your word tells us to treat others as we would want to be treated, not as they have treated us. This is difficult for us at times, and we ask that you empower us to give others that grace which you have extended unto us, that we may be free of the power of the enemy in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we thank you that you not only died for our sins, but you rose again from the dead so that we could have a victorious, overcoming Christian life here on earth as it is in heaven. Father, let every one of us walk in the power of that resurrection truth. For in Jesus' name I've asked. Heavenly Father, we come unto you today. We are praying for all those that feel that they've gone too far and beyond of your love and your grace and your forgiveness. Father, we pray that today you will make it real in their lives that indeed forgiveness in Christ is for them. Father, we pray, even, O oh Lord, for Ammonia Allison, Manas Mahund, Joanne Scanterbury, Francis Kojo Smith, Andrew McDonnell, Chima Duru, S.C. Savage, Michael Thwaitis, Lisa Dempster Wims, Priscilla Headley, Hilda Abiri, and as many as may be sick or ill today are not able to join us. Father, heal them in your mercy. In Jesus' name I ask. Heavenly Father, we pray for all the projects of the church, the USPG project in Tanzania to prevent transmission of AIDS from mother to child. We pray for the power, the fight, and primary communities to prevent youth violence. Father, we ask, O oh Lord, that, Lord, your resurrection power will affect all these wounds and make this project even to be for your glory and to help man for in Jesus' name we have asked. Heavenly Father, we pray that, Lord, as we continue in this week, as we continue in this year, and as we continue in the new month that we'll be entering into tomorrow, that, Father, we will always be conscious that, Lord, you have actually forgiven us, and that, Lord, we do not need to carry the weight of guilt all around. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that it shall be well with our families, it shall be well with our work, it shall be well with all that we lay our hands upon. Father, we pray that your resurrection power we call upon everything that is supposed to be alive, but is dead in our lives. Father, we ask, oh God, the Lord, our, your peace will reign in our hearts. The peace that comes from knowing that truly we have been forgiven and that we are loved. Father, we also pray that God, we will continually extend this love even to others now and always. For in Jesus' name, we have asked, merciful Father, accept these prayers. For the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
when we one day see Jesus one of the things that we will recognize him by is that we'll know him by his scars his scars remain because they are a measure of his love for you we're going to just look at some of the things that are going on in uh, the coming days and weeks just as a, a little notice slot for you so next Thursday so Thursday coming um, we're going to start something slightly new uh, we're just going to have coffee and cake available in here from 10 till midday so anyone can drop in you don't have to come for the whole thing you might just want to pop in 11 o'clock or come at 10 and go at half 10 or come at 10 and stay for the whole thing entirely up to you uh, but we're starting that on Thursday so you'd be very welcome to come along to that and it's a perfect thing to bring a friend along to so it's nothing too religious you know just want to bring a friend along to come and get a feel for the place and you never know when it's sunny we might even sit out on the patio out there and watch the traffic go by huh? how great does that sound uh, okay so and the next please uh, so also starting next week uh, we're going to have a prayer meeting on zoom available so there's various opportunities to pray in the parish uh, on wednesday mornings at st george's uh, thursday mornings at the peninsula uh, and friday mornings we're going to put this out on zoom so anyone can dial in we're going to send out the zoom link uh, on the email so it'll go out to everyone if we haven't got your email address if you're visiting and you want to stick around with us that would be great we can put you on the email address so you always know what's going on anyway that will be coming over to you this week and again it's something just to to drop in when you can if you would like to um, and it's just another opportunity where we can pray for each other pray for god's church pray for our place and pray for this nation i'm just really not standing in the right place am i <laughs> I'll go over here, shall I? Okay, fine. Uh, and the next. Uh, so, Claire, it's next week. Yes, would you like to stand, Claire? So, Claire is running the marathon uh, in aid of EGLAC, which is the East Greenwich Legal Advice Centre, which meets here and provides advice to those who need legal help and assistance. So, they provide their expertise to them. And Claire, very kindly, is uh, running a marathon to raise money uh, to support that. If you would like to support her in doing that, then on the collecting, which is the, uh, the offering machine, um, then there is uh, the option to donate some money to what Claire is doing. So uh, I can't wait for you to come back and tell us all about it, actually. <laughs> uh, some photos. Yes, marvellous. Uh, one more. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Our photocopier is, is I'm afraid, it's uh, rather ancient and has been failing, as you may have noticed from time to time. Uh, so we need to get a new one. And, uh, and that's actually quite a big unbudgeted expense so it will cost to replace what we've got and that's actually a picture of what we got is more than six grand would you believe um so we we may not go quite that uh, that sophisticated i don't know but uh, we thought we'd just give an opportunity if anybody wanted to donate to, to support that i know photocopiers are pretty boring in the great scheme of things but they're very useful in order to provide stuff uh, for our services, uh, for other services in the parish, and also it'd be good to be able to do some good publicity because that, that, that old one doesn't really reproduce very well. So it is John's last service with us today. Uh, do stick around, as I said earlier. If you haven't come prepared uh, for a bring and share lunch, please don't worry about that. Please stick around anyway. You'd be most welcome. Uh, we want to just give thanks to John for all that he's done, all that he's been for so many people in the parish. Uh, and uh, give him a good send off but also we don't want to close the door to him because we hope he'll come and see us we want to kind of relieve you of the burden but, but remain with the welcome but we'll be looking at that a little bit later uh, we have some videos of some comments people have made uh, about John what he means to them oh no yeah <laughs> uh, anyway so do stick around if you possibly can that would be great um, any more is that it that is it. So it's time for our song of the week, which of course is all about Easter. Do 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 do
Myself, I'm so giddy. He ain't here, he's gone. Ain't no point in looking, man. He ain't here, he's gone. Make sure I don't retain him, man. He ain't here, he's gone. Say his name, we know who he is. He ain't here, he's gone. And we better about that bunny break it down. He's risen, hallelujah. He's risen, hallelujah. He's risen, hallelujah. Cause he's done home, blown, give it to you. Cause he's done home, blown, give it to you. stands. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. But then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The peace of the risen Christ be always with you. Let's offer one another a sign of that peace. Shall we remain standing as we sing again how deep the Father's love for us. How deep the Father's love for us. How vast beyond all measure. Should give his only soul.
to make us his treasure. How great the pain of searing loss. The Father turns his face away as wounds which mar the chosen one. Bring medicines to glory. And bear with the man upon the cross, my sin upon his shoulders. Ashamed, I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers. It was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished. His dying breath has brought me life. I know that it is finished. So I will not boast in anything. No guilt, no power, no wisdom. But I will boast in Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection. And why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer. But this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom. So why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer. But this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom. His wounds have paid my ransom. Creator of all, you wash away our sins. You give us new birth by the Spirit and redeem us in the blood of Christ. As we celebrate the resurrection, renew your gift of life within us. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. The Lord is here. He us. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is always right to give you thanks, God our Creator, loving and faithful, holy and strong. You made us and the whole universe and filled your world with life. You sent your Son to live among us, Jesus our Saviour, Mary's child. He suffered on the cross. He died to save us from our sins. He rose in glory from the dead. You send your Spirit to bring new life to the world and clothe us with power from on high. And so we join the angels to celebrate and say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
Father, on the night before he died, Jesus shared a meal with his friends. He took the bread and thanked you. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Great is... Sorry. After the meal, Jesus took the cup of wine. He thanked you and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood, the new promise of God's unfailing love. Do this to remember me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, as we bring this bread and wine and remember his death and resurrection, send your Holy Spirit that we who share these gifts may be fed by Christ's body and his blood. Pour your Spirit upon us that we may love one another, work for the healing of the earth, and share the good news of Jesus as we wait for his coming in glory. For honor and praise belong to you, Father, with Jesus your Son and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the Lord's Prayer. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever amen Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Lord, our hearts hunger for you. Give us this bread always. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. All are welcome to come forward to receive Holy Communion, the bread and the wine, or if you prefer just the bread, or if you wish to receive a blessing, uh, then please keep your arms folded so we know. If you'd rather stay in your seat, that's also fine. We also have uh, gluten-free wafers, so do ask if you need a gluten-free wafer instead of bread.
Let us pray, and I think we'll say together the prayer after communion. God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy. Grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. And our last hymn, if you'll stand as you're able, for uh, the service is Thine be the glory, risen, conquering Son. So please stand as you're able. and come, come, great song. And this is the victory thou all death has won. Angels in bright raiment from roll the stone away. Can't the folded grave clothes where the body lay. Thine be the glory Risen in conquering song, and this is the victory thou, O death, has won. Lo, Jesus meets us, risen from the tomb. Lovingly he greets us, scatters fear and gloom. Let the church with gladness hymns of triumph sing. For her Lord now leaveth, death has lost its sting. Mine be the glory, risen conquering song. And this is the death is won. No more we doubt the glorious of life. Life is not without thee, aid us in our strife. Make us more than conquerors through thy deathless love. Bring us safe through Jordan to thy home above. Died be the glory, risen, conquering soul. And this is thy victory, thou, O death, has won. Or if you'd uh, like just to take a seat. And uh, before our final prayer. Now, as you know, it's uh, John's retirement weekend. So it's his last Sunday with us. Thank you, John, for speaking and leading us in our communion. Um, so we can't let that go without all sorts of kind of celebration or at least marking and giving thanks uh, to John for him. I've only known John for the last uh, nine months or so, uh, but it's been a delight having you with the team, with us, just having you as a friend and a brother. Um, and I'm sure a lot of you have known John for much longer than that, because he's been around for ages, and he's been a great servant to the Lord, and uh, a great person to have around. So uh, we've had a bit of a collection for you, John, and uh, Ruth and Michael are going to come and bring it. So if you'd like to stand. Yeah, there we go.
Um, I hardly know where to begin. Um, you're such an inspiration. I mean, you bring so much colour and life to worship. You bring art, culture, science, so many different ways of looking at things. And you're one of the kindest people I've ever, ever met. And I'm just so going to miss you. And I want to say thank you for everything you've done. And a lot, you do so much behind the scenes too that a lot of people don't know about. And, you know, you've been such a blessing to so, so many people. And we just wish you the very best. And please don't go far away. Please stay around. <laughs> I mean, we don't want you to keep working too hard, but, you know, we, we don't want to we'll miss you. Mark, will you say I something? I, 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 can't, I, can't, I can't match that. So on behalf of Christchurch family uh, and all the people that you have been able to influence over your time here, we'd like to show our appreciation with this lovely gift. Thank you. You, you are... Allowed to open it if you wish. Shall I open it? Um, Something what was he to open it, John? It must be very precious. Oh. Okay. We should get some kids to come and help me. Eh? I don't know what it is. There we go. Just poke a finger in there and rip. Yeah. It's a mighty strength. Uh, Voice over. I feel really weedy at this point. Say, Pippa, are you mad? Yes. Mm? The assignment's unbearable, isn't it? Go again, no way. Right. There we go. Pull it, pull, pull again. There we go. Let the let, roots let, pull at the bottom. There we go. Lovely picture of. Uh, London, yeah. my favourite city. More like a, a lot of Greenwich. And a lot of Greenwich. And we can so. identify Christchurch. Right. And here's also a car that Christ most Church people... Christchurch is on here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's very kind of you, thank you. And uh, sorry your leaving card. Signed by everyone, so thank you so much. That's really sweet for you all, sure. thank you. Speech, 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 speech. No, it's been wonderful to be here. The Church of England thinks you're past it when you hit 70, so that's why one reason I'm retiring. Uh, I'm applying for permission to officiate. What well, means the bishop gives you a special license to take occasional services. Uh, so I do hope I'll be back one day if I'm invited, uh, and uh, I'll be helping at other churches around Greenwich and uh, Lewisham and other places, maybe even in the city of London. So uh, I won't be vanishing off the face of the earth. Uh, so it's been lovely to be with you all this time. And uh, thank you again. I believe I get 50 quid a pop for funerals, but uh, there we go. Anyone need a funeral? Well, there you go. It's good to give an adverse, isn't it? And that's a real uh, Well, for our final prayer, shall we just pray for John, and then we'll pray for each other, and then please do stick around for the Bring a Chair lunch. If you haven't come prepared for that, that's fine. You're still very, very welcome to stay, or at least have a coffee uh, if you can. So shall we pray? Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for John. We thank you for all that he means to us, all that he's been for us, and all that he will continue to be. Lord, we just ask for your blessing on his life, uh, Lord, please watch over him, protect him. Lord, give him wisdom and joy as he looks into the future and the next things that you have planned and prepared for him. We pray that he will be a blessing to others just as he has been for us. So, Lord, please guide him in the future. Uh, guide his steps. Stand before him. Be the light before him. The light that lights his path. We pray. And, Lord, may we also this week 
bring light wherever we are, Lord, in our families, in our workplaces, uh, wherever you've placed us. May we bring your light, your love, your forgiveness, and share the wonder, the joy that we know this morning of you, our risen Lord Jesus. So may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us all today and always. Amen. the door near of hope in Jerusalem fold at the grave boats tomb fill the light as the angels announce Christ is risen see God's salvation blood wrought in life born in pain paid in sacrifice fulfilled in Christ the man for he leaves Christ is risen from the dead. See Mary weeping, where is he laid? As in sorrow she turns from the end to turn. Hears of his speaking, calling her name. It's the master, the Lord, raised to life again. The voice that spans the years, speaking life, stirring hope, bringing peace to us. We'll stand till he appears, for he leaves, Christ is risen from the dead. Christ is risen from the dead. Christ is risen from the dead. Christ is risen from the dead.